Welcome to the Rooted Podcast, our pursuit at Richmond House of Prayer. I am Joseph Johnson, and this is Samantha. And we're coming to you today to talk about. Got to keep my hands down because I got I got um, calmly spoken to by our our guy Moo here, who's recording and doing all this. That my hands have been up here, up and down here. So if you see me looking off camera, it's probably because he's telling me you need to put your hands down. <laughs> So today we're back to talk about obedience. You need oh, to be obedient uh, to move and keep yeah, your hands yeah. down. Be uh, <laughs> obedience, and we kind of touched on that last week with this uh, in our sermon series. We're talking about the characteristics of a disciple. We talked about hearing the voice of God. We talked about um, uh, what was it? Hearing the voice of God. We talked about faith. Now we're talking mm-hmm. about obedience, and we really got into faith and obedience. They're really they're really linked together they strongly. Are. Yeah, I feel so, like faith, obedience, and intimacy are all very. Yeah. Yeah. So this is so cool. Like, what does it mean to be obedient? I love, like, when you look back in the Hebrew and you look up words and you see what they mean and things like that. And um, what? So, like, with our children, they know the difference in hearing and listening. Like, they do know this because they actually pray. When we're praying for certain people for wisdom, they don't pray for them to hear God. They pray for them to listen to God I do and I and I have we have had extensive conversations about the difference between hearing and listening because there is a difference well there there is in our culture but there isn't in like if you go to the Hebrew yeah there's not there's not but in our culture there is but it's if you look up what it does listening mean it actually says there is an act of listening there is an it is an act yeah because you're not listening means that you're hearing and obeying you're not just hearing Mm -hmm. and that's why i tell my my kids when i tell them to do something i said did you listen to me i don't ask them did they hear me i know they heard me i've said it five times are your kids my kids too Uh, well no um but they know i say did you listen to me because they know Mm. i know you heard me did you listen but did you listen which is mean did you hear me and then go do it yeah so (laughs) excuse me that starts you off. <laughs> so in Hebrew, to hear, obey, and take action are all the same word. The Shema is the word. Uh, Shema. And then there's a prayer that they call the Shema. Um, so it isn't just that we hear, but it's that we hear, we obey by taking action on what we heard. So you can't, biblically, like when you go to Old Testament scripture, you can't separate out hearing from acting on what was heard. When, uh, so and we'll just read it here in just a second, but like to hear God is to obey god and to obey god is to hear god those are hand in hand in scripture so when people tell me like well i heard god say this and then but i didn't do it well then you didn't hear you didn't biblically you didn't hear god according to what the hebrew says so that's what i like so because hearing has an action connected mm-hmm. to it we kind of separate that like you just talked about we separate those out in our culture but uh, Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 9, I'll just read it here. It says, these are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. You and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Or if your translation may say, hear, O Israel, then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord the God of your ancestors promised you. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, with all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you are on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Moses was saying, this has to be in front of you at all times. The word of the Lord has to be in front of you at all times. And then when you see it, there has to be an action connected to it. There's a response. It demands a response. And that that's so different than what, than we feel like, I, I think a lot of times in Christianity today, people feel like that they can read something in scripture and it's like, they get to choose if they obey it or not. It's like, okay. So for me, when, with, with this, what? it reminds me of like, okay, you know, the, the, the songs that we grew up listening to were in the army of the Lord, you know, mm-hmm. like literally in the military, if they, your sergeant says do this, yeah, 
You don't just say, oh, yeah, I heard you. And yeah. just stand there with your hands in your pocket. You can. You can, but... <laughs> But there's a consequence. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what happened to Israel. There's consequences. Exactly. God, God, the whole the whole book numbers in the wilderness, it was all about Israel's unbelief and disobedience. Yes. And how they never could enter in to the fullness of the promise. And that's what Hebrews 3 and 4 is about. It's warning us as people of the new covenant, don't be like Israel who disobeyed, whose bodies fell in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Be like people who hear and obey, and you come into the fullness of the rest of God. Yeah. Wow. That, that, there's a lot to that. Hebrews 3 and 4 are probably two of my favorite chapters in all Scripture. About resting. Yes. Yeah, just resting, in yeah. The, and, and but trusting, obeying. Mm-hmm. Um, James 1 and 22 says, Don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it. That is the essence of self-deception. So always let his word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life. Mm, that's good. And that's the Passion Translation that's saying that. So don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it. Don't try to separate out hearing and doing. They're, they're meant to be the same. They're meant to be together. So what does it mean to be obedient? It means that when I read the word of God or when God says something to me, I, I adjust my life to that. And that actually manifests my faith. That is, it, shows, is that not repentance, what you just said? Changing the way you think, make it a hard turn from how you were to what God says. Yes, exactly. And repentance and obedience, I feel like go hand in hand because if you yes, yes, yeah. keep would, going, keep going. No, no. I'm going to go That's down good. a Joe Rabbit trail there, but That's great. That's what these are for. <laughs> <clears throat> so our we just we've been asking this question: Are obedience, growth, and intimacy connected? And I got a big block of scripture here that I wanted to read. Do you want you want to read? It? You want me to read it? John um, fifteen. I, I can read it, but before we go any further, it just reminded me of. The the women that, that do our uh, prayer group here on Thursday nights, and, and um, I used to be able to go to that more, but the main thing that God spoke to us in those prayer meetings was about repentance, mm-hmm. about turning. But in reality, if you think about it, he was really speaking to us, yes, about repentance, but about obedience. They go hand in hand. Yeah. So so repentance is changing the way you think. I'm, I'm not going to think this way. I'm not going to walk this path anymore. Yeah. I'm going to change. I'm going to go this way. So the the manifestation of repentance comes by obedience. Yeah, it's obedient. I'm being obedient to this. This shows that I've repented, which shows that I actually believe God, which is my faith. My faith looks like something. Exactly. It's it's all connected. And daily repentance comes by obedience. Yeah, I choose to repent when I when the Holy Spirit, you know, the, the the hound of heaven, when he points something out, he sniffs out my life and he finds something that's not right and he puts his finger on it. And I go, whoa, that's a problem. I didn't even see that. Or maybe I did. And maybe I was just ignoring it. God, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's let's clean it up. Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. Let's repent. Let's move forward. Let's be obedient to what you're saying and thereby manifest my faith. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That was a nugget that just hit hit my spirit. And that was good. Like, I feel like I could just talk about that for a minute because like. Just go and be your own amen corner. Yeah. hundred (laughs) percent. Like, I feel like that's a word. I mean, if God was speaking that to our our prayer team during Thursday night for our church, then I feel like that's a word for, for, for them even now. Like if he's talking about repentance, he's talking about obedience and we need to be obedient to what he's saying. I think he's saying that to the whole body of Christ. You need to change the way you think. You need to, you need to quit, quit being stewarded by society and start being stewarded or pottered by your own flesh yeah. and what your own feelings yeah. and yeah and, and instead be stirred to be pottered by me mm-hmm. be let me transform you yeah mm-hmm. I like that yeah okay <laughs> so our obedience growth and intimacy connected and we're going to go to john 15 1 through 17 for this because this is my one of my favorite sections oh, of scripture yeah. about this, this is good go for it i am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. 
I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this to lay down one's life for his own friends. You are my friend if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot, but it's so good. Like you could just sit there for for a year. Yes. I mean, camp camp there in that scripture and just grow. Uh, yeah. So, so let's break that down then. So Jesus is saying, "Do what I say to do." And if you do what I said to do, you you abide in me, I abide in you. You ask anything in my name, I'll do it. So that the Father may receive glory, your lives may bear much fruit. Thereby, you'll be shown to be my disciples. So intimacy, growth, obedience, are these things connected? Yes. The life of Jesus represents that. He said, I do what I see my father do. I I hear him say that. That's what I speak. Jesus was going to get alone with the father all the time in the desert so that he could know what the father was about. Mm -hmm. So he could manifest him to humanity. So my growth, the fruit in my life is directly connected to me being in intimacy with God, which is directly connected to me being obedient to what God says. Like we, we took a vow in our marriage. If, if I break that vow, if I'm not obedient to that vow, then, then how could I say I have intimacy with you? Like how, I can't, I can't say, well, me, you know, I, I hear people, like people treat Jesus like he's just their, their pal. Now, like Jesus is our brother. He's our King. He's, he, he's everything, but they're like, yeah, I love Jesus. You know, him and I talk all the time and it's like, but there's an obedience problem in their life. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, so what kind of intimacy do you have with God if we're, you're not also being obedient? Because because Jesus, there's a covenant with with him, just as there's a covenant between you and I. Yeah, he was the one that was the, who struck the covenant. We get brought into mm-hmm. that. And as a part of that covenant, you know, he he was the faithful partner, but we get, we get gr- grafted into this through the spirit. And now we have this opportunity for intimacy, but it, comes with obedience. Yes. It comes with obeying what he said. So I can't say I have intimacy with God if I don't have obedience. And I won't have fruit if I don't have intimacy and obedience. And God won't receive glory from my life because my life bears fruit and shows that I'm a disciple and brings glory to the Father when I obey and when I have intimacy. This is all connected. It is. Yeah. It is. And it's like, I mean, you can even take examples from, you know, your earthly life and, and your earthly father, you know, uh, Joe's dad owns a business. And when he came of, of a certain age, he began to bring you up and show you how that business worked. Yeah. Did he not? He did. And, and he brought you in and he, he taught you how it worked mm-hmm. and, and he gave you, uh, let you even buy a portion of it so that you could begin to learn yeah, on your yeah, own. Did, right. Yeah. yeah. And to grow and learn in that and to come alongside of you. Yeah. But through that, you had to listen to what he was saying. Mm-hmm. You had to, to come under, under him and what he was saying and be obedient to, yeah. to those things. And that grew our relationship. It did. And then that produced fruit in my life that brought him glory. So exactly. to speak, as my father. Yeah. Because people looked at me and they're like, Man, I see your dad in you. And then yeah. look at the fruit in your life, which is directly ties back to that intimacy I have yeah. with him. And I mean, and and if that was the path that, that that God had for you, you would then have you would have an inheritance because he's taught you how to do this yeah. now. I could I could I could have stepped into that business and kept going. Yeah, yes. that's right. So that's right. That's how I kind of look at uh, yeah. what you're saying. That's good stuff. So obedience, growth, and intimacy are all connected. You can't you can't disconnect them. Mm-hmm. We have to be obedient to what the word says. And by being obedient, Jesus says, we'll have intimacy with God. And he actually says that our joy will be full. I said this a while back that like, if, if I have a joy problem, then I probably have an obedience problem. Mm, that's good. Yeah. If I have a growth problem, I've probably got an obedience problem. If I've got an intimacy problem, I've probably got an obedience problem. All this comes back to obedience. I think same thing, you know, it, you're talking about joy, but yeah, with peace as well. Yeah. Like if you struggle with like, you know, anxiety and, and fear and you don't have peace in your life, it, it's probably an obedience problem because you have probably just not sat down and said, God, what is in my life that I need? 
what, what am I giving place in my life that, that you should have? Like, what am I putting in front of you type thing? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or like, you know, what weeds are coming in ar- around around the vines that's choking them out, you know, yeah. that, that I can't abide in you. And so I, somebody in our, our church told me a long time ago, they said that when they first got saved, that they were worried about bills and money and stuff like that. And they said, then they read how that they could, they could have anxiety to the point of it being sin. They, 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 they gleaned this from what Jesus was saying. Don't be anxious for anything. And he, he said, Oh, well, I'm not going to be anxious. He just, he just chose not to be anxious. And you're like, well, you can't choose to not be anxious. You, you can, if you, what are you putting your trust in? Exactly. And, I mean, I mean, he says, if, if I can provide for the sparrows, like, can I not? So why should you be anxious? It's literally right there. He says it. Yeah, it's yeah. in red letters. Yeah, yeah. He cares for, he cares for all this other thing. He cares all these other things about creation. Yes. Would he not care for you? Uh-huh. Yeah. So this, this individual told me, he's like, yeah, I read that. And I was like, oh, well, I got to stop being anxious. He said, I stopped being anxious about the bill and God started providing for me. Like he said, uh, uh, you know, money came in the mail that they would have never thought that they were going to get. And it was exactly what they needed when they needed it. And he said, before then, I was anxious about it. When I quit being anxious, I started seeing God's provision. Because he was trusting them. There was, exactly. there, it was, it was uh, faith through an act of obedience. Yeah, so he chose to obey what the word said, mm-hmm. which is not be anxious. He, by doing that, there was fruit that was produced. Yes. There's a manifestation of that faith, which was God, God he received the blessing of God. Mm-hmm. You know, was it James says, don't ask anything double-minded? Don't, you know, you, um, Basically, you're conflicted. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, Your faith is wavering. Yeah, you're wavering. Like, that, you're not going to receive that. Mm-hmm. You're not going to receive anything from that. So we have to obey. Yes. And by obeying, God promises us that we will be in intimacy with him. We will, we will have that intimacy, that our joy will be full, and that we'll have growth, fruit, that will bring glory to the Father. Yeah, and, and awesome. all throughout this, this um, passage of Scripture, he, he says, this is my command. Do what I command. I mean, this command is said over and over again. It's not a choice. Exactly. Like it's, 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 it shouldn't be up. It's not up for debate about mm-hmm. do, are we supposed to follow or not? If I'm a disciple of Jesus, I do what Jesus says. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm a disciple. A command is not a request. <laughs> yes. Yes. We treat commands like requests sometimes, yes. but that's not what it is. Like I can say, oh, well, I'm not going to obey that. Okay, sure. Take yourself down, stroll on disobedience, but but disobedience lane. Just yeah, stroll on down. Yeah, I can say that, but it doesn't change the command. Yeah, like it's still a command. Like when God says it, yeah, that's so good. It's not a request. I love that. That's really good. That, that'd be a good bumper sticker. <laughs> Thanks. We're just gonna be checking out bumper stickers. Here. Yeah. So what is disobedience then? And I I really just have unbelief on this mm-hmm. because. In Hebrews 3 and 4, anytime disobedience is used or unbelief is used, it's the same word in the Greek. Yeah. You can't, if, if I believe God, then I obey God. If I don't obey God, then I don't believe God. I don't trust him. I, I'm not being his disciple. I'm being somebody's disciple, but I'm not being Jesus' disciple. That's right. When people tell me, like, um, I, I've, I've talked to people before, and I don't know where I heard this from originally. This did not come from me, but they said, well, I, I, I'm a Christian, but I want to do this. I said, you can do that. You can go down that path if you want, but Jesus isn't going that way. So if you're following Jesus, you got to go down Jesus's path. Mm-hmm. And well, but I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't feel like I'm called to evangelism. Doesn't matter. Great commission, go make disciples. What are we called to do? What does it look like to make disciples? It looks like praying for the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely been given freely receive, freely give. Like mm-hmm. it's just, we, we've received power. We've received the truth. We go give it away and we manifest the kingdom and we do it, whether we're a nurse, whether we're a homemaker, whether we're a chemist, whether we're working in a factory, we do what Jesus said to do when Jesus says to do it. And that's not a request. It's a and command. it's not a request. It's a command. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I've, I've not done that before and I've had to repent. Mm-hmm. Like I, we're not going to sit up here and act like we, we've done everything perfect because we've yeah. not, <laughs> but it's a, it's a relationship, and whenever I, whenever I don't do what I, what, you know, what maybe the Holy Spirit reveals to me in, in Scripture or what God speaks to me, oh, I've got to I've got to correct that. That's disobedience. I don't get to choose if I listen to Him or not. If I want to be His disciple, if I'm going to be His disciple, I have to I have to listen to Him. If I just want to say I'm I like Jesus, well, 
then I can pick and choose. But that's doing a disservice to him. If I, if I pick and choose what I'm listening to or I'm obeying, I don't truly believe he's the king of kings and lord of lords. If I pick and choose what I, what I accept and what I reject, then I'm not treating him as the savior of the world, as my rabbi who I'm a disciple to. I'm treating him like maybe just some good teacher who, uh, you know, maybe on Monday I feel like obeying him, but on Tuesday I don't. That's not a disciple. A disciple listens and obeys and they grow in intimacy and they have fruit that brings glory to the Father at all times. Yeah, I mean, and that would be like, you know, when we first got married, if I said, um, okay, Joe, you can take care of all the things that need fixed around the house and you can take care of all the car repairs, but I don't trust you enough to handle our finances. Okay. Okay, well, would, would that build faith in our relationship? No. No, and I feel like that's the same thing with God. When we step out and we give him, in obedience, we give him everything. We don't just pick and choose okay, the I mean, areas. I, mean, I, was, I was trying okay, to yeah. with you. I was, try, I was like, <laughs> We don't okay, just pick we and choose the areas of our life that we, we give to him. Okay. But we obey him and trust him in everything. Then that builds trust. That builds our faith yeah. in who he is. And and it's like, I have, I have faith that God can do these things, but not these things. I have faith with this area of my life for God, but not these other areas of my life. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. And we're called to give everything because my life's like, not my own. Yeah. Like, sorry, God, we can't have a joint bank account. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been bought with a price. Yes. Our life's not our own. So when I choose to follow Jesus and become his disciple, I'm laying my life down and saying, you've given me life. And just like the elders in Revelation, they throw their crowns back down at Jesus's feet. Mm-hmm. I've been given life and now I take it back and I lay it back at his feet and say, okay, what are we doing? Yeah. What, what, what are we doing, Jesus? I'm here to follow you, not follow me. Um, I think that in, in, in speaking of, of which, and maybe there's some people out here that, that struggle with giving people in your life to God. Does that make sense? Trusting that God has, God's going to like take care of people. And yes. Yeah. So uh, I struggled for a long time after Kaya was born, our oldest daughter, Kaya was born with this fear that something was going to happen to her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that was, that was such a, so anxious and fearful. And that would manifest like a wolf in your dreams, right? It would, I would have yeah. dreams and it was, it was, it was terrible, but it wasn't until I was obedient enough to lay my children at God's feet. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like I have to do this periodically. Uh, yeah. I, I literally, I, I can feel that anxiousness, that fear trying to creep back in mm-hmm. uh, for whatever reason or circumstance. And I just say, no, God, you gave them to me. Like yeah. you gave them life and then you entrusted me with them, but they're not mine. So I give them back to you. Yeah. Just as Hannah gave you Samuel, mm-hmm. you know, I give them to you because they're yours. And and with that obedience and that trust, I think comes, you know, protection and blessing and favor on their lives mm-hmm. because I am entrusting God with them. Yeah, I like that. And do you remember, like, when, before you moved up from Bria, that <clears throat> that time wherever I was, I started struggling with that too. I yeah. never struggled with that, and all of a sudden it just it started happening. I was like, I had like this extreme anxiousness that kept trying to come over me. I knew it was demonic, mm-hmm. and you were encouraging me, like, no, no, you have to give. You have to lay this at God's feet. I was like, what is happening here? You know, I never mm-hmm. hadn't really struggled with that. Um, and I think, I think that, you know, people, a lot of people do, do struggle with that. I mean, even people with adult children that may have, you know, issues with addiction or, or whatever it may be. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people in life that struggle with that, but we have to remember that, that they are not ours. They're God's and we have to be obedient enough to trust him. Yeah. With Man, him. I like that. That was really good. That, the story, I had forgot about that until you were saying that. Yeah. Um, so I can choose to not obey a random stranger's words, but I don't like, it's not up for debate whether or not we, if we're disciples, we, we obey the word of God. It's not up for debate, right? It's a command. Yeah. So unbelief and disobedience cannot be separated just as hearing and doing cannot be separated. If we believe we'll do our actions will align with that. If we don't believe then our actions will align with that, with that unbelief. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and close out. All right. so we'll go ahead and, uh, I'm going to close you out up. with this psalm. Are you worth more than earthly wants and desires? 
Will more things and programs start a spiritual fire? More time with you is the answer to it all. My words and good intentions just continue to fall. I need you more than all of the above. Your grace, your mercies, your unrelenting love. You gave me this time, so I'll give it back. My faith and confidence will grow and won't fall flat. I'll turn it off. I'll save it for later. Nothing's worth more than to walk in your favor. To meet you daily and seek your truth. I won't squander what's left of my fleeting youth. I'll dive deeper and enter high places. I want to reach the fragrant holy spaces. Give me words and direction for new seasons. I long for encounters and spiritual deaths beyond reason. Burn within me to the depths of my soul. Lord, help me be disciplined and walk in self-control. Nice. We love it. And with that, we'll wrap up our third installment of this series on obedience. And we'll pick up next week with Empowered by the Spirit. And until then, go do what Jesus said.